Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome the Honorable Head of Doctoral Program of Environmental Science from Postgraduate School Universitas Brawijaya, Professor Dr. Insinyur Gatot Ciptadi DISS, Lecturer in Doctoral Program of Environmental Science in this today represented by Ibu Resti, and students in doctoral and master program of environmental science. I welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the postgraduate school, Universitas Brawijaya, for the three-in-one international guest lecture today and tomorrow, 3rd and 4th September 2024. We also would like to recognize and welcome our lecturer today, Professor Kohei Watanabe, from Faculty of Liberal Arts, Teikyo University, Japan. Before we start the lecture session, please welcome the head of the doctoral program of environmental science, Professor Dr. Insinyur Gatot Ciptadi, GESS, to deliver his remarks and officially open the three in one program. Good morning, selamat pagi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This and gentlemen, okay. uh, 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 all of the students of the postgraduate program of Brawijaya University both for the master and doctoral program. Uh, distinguished uh, Professor Watanabe from uh, Keikyo, uh, Japan. First of all, I would like to uh, express our gratitude and appreciation, especially for uh, Professor Wanatabe, that today uh, come to uh, Brawijaya University, especially for uh, a program of uh, case lecture for our program in uh, three in one in postgraduate. Uh, uh, Doctoral program and master uh, program in Brawijaya University. Uh, we uh, would like, of course, thank you very much for the professors. Uh, that we hope that today, uh, with our students of was great with uh, professor will uh, sharing uh, your experience and also uh, your expertise of course in relation with the environment uh, in general and also we hope of course uh, for the of the students but for the master and to club program uh, for well joining in this course, in these uh, discussions, in order to have a uh, opportunity to have uh, maybe a uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge uh, in environments with uh, Professor Watanabe. Uh, for information that uh, we in postgraduate programs each semester we have about uh, 25 students for the doctorate and about uh, 40 students for the master degree. And also, also uh, not only we 
I have students from Indonesians, but also we have an international uh, student for this semester. We have two international students from uh, Nigeria and then from, yeah, from Somalia. Yeah, of course, uh, uh, for uh, last year, we have a student from uh, Vietnam, from Mesir, from, uh, from Egypt uh, and other country. Uh, the three in one uh, programs is one of the uh, important uh, international program in Brawijaya uh, towards uh, to uh, realizations of the uh, world class world class university of the Brawijaya. So of course, in this program. We invite uh, expert, uh, professor, or uh, senior lecturer from abroad, uh, and at this at the same time we also invite uh, the practitioners and 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 environment fields uh, to discuss with with our students. So we hope that uh, for the next future, of course, especially. Uh, for uh, Professor Warna Tapi, we hope uh, we hope that uh, this program will uh, possible to uh, following by uh, a collaboration, by international cooperation. For for example, for the collaborations in research and also uh, cash lecture, it's possible also for all students, especially for. Uh, joining in uh, student uh, exchange or staff exchange. Okay, I think uh, that's all that I would like to express, especially uh, my thank and uh, gratitude uh, for all of the students that are joining in these sessions, and especially for the Professor Wanatapi. Uh, with uh, the Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, course, international course, and program three in one is open. Thank you very much. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you, Prof. Gatot, for your remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask uh, some time for photo session for our documentation. For the committee, please help us arranging the photo session. Jadi, Bapak-Ibu, saya mohon kesediaannya untuk bisa mengambil foto sejenak untuk dokumentasi kegiatan 3-in-1 hari ini. Kami persilakan untuk bisa ke arah depan karena kita butuh banner yang ada tulisan 3-in-1-nya. Yo, Bapak Ibu, bisa tunjukkan? Uh, ya. pindah ke arah nah. ya.
Baik, terima kasih Bapak-Ibu bisa kembali ke tempat. Honorable ladies, uh, guests, and gentlemen, uh, next session. The next session are the lecture from Professor Kohei Watanabe. The topic about general concept of waste management in Japan and the Indonesia. Before starting the lecture, please pardon me to read the brief curriculum vitae of Professor Watanabe. Professor Kohei Watanabe works in Faculty of Liberal Arts, Tokyo University, Japan. He also a research associate in Malaysian Commonwealth Study Center, University of Cambridge, UK. Also research associate in Economics Research Institute, Chuo University, Japan. And Prof. Watanabe lives in Tokyo, Japan with history of education, a bachelor in engineering, about environmental and sanitary engineering in March 1991 in Kyoto University, Department of Engineering. And his master in letters of, uh, and I beg your pardon, MA in letters and a specific topic in Geo Jeffrey. And in March 1993, also in Kyoto University Graduate School. And in 1995, in University of Cambridge, Master of Philosophy in Environment and Development. And his uh, Professor Watanabe PhD is in University of Cambridge in 2003. And Professor Watanabe has a lot of research and also amount with a thousand dollars or million yen, uh, whether from the government of Japan or any foundation. And he also wrote specific scientific uh, papers or book chapters within his expertise in waste management. And about academic interest is municipal waste management, materials flow in society, especially on items with reduced and reuse potentials, example for food waste or e-waste. And regions include uh, Japan, Europe, including transition economies, USA and of course in Southeast Asia. And that's the brief uh, curriculum vitae of Prof. Matanabe. Uh, we will start the lecture session and I will deliver the session to our moderator, Ibu Restilis to Angayas PhD. Time is yours. Thank you. Okay. Uh, terima kasih, Mbak Jihan. Uh, so, good morning, uh, Bapak Ibu, Mas Mbak sekalian. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, it's today is supposed to be my class, <laughs> but then uh, we will have the three in one session instead. Um, as you have noticed, that Professor Watanabe has come far to Indonesia. So please uh, give your attention and please ask questions later. Yeah, uh, we we would expect like very nice discussion. Room. Okay, I think. Uh, yeah, that's enough background. So I will just give the uh, time for Professor Watanabe. So Professor, please. Thank you. Um, I'll first uh, share my slides. Right. Uh, um, and uh, selamat pagi. Uh, <laughs> nama, uh, Watanabe, uh, dari Japan. Uh, from now on, I'll speak in English. <laughs> uh, only I can speak Bahasa sedikit as well. 
Um, yes. Um, so uh, the title of uh, today's uh, lecture uh, is the Introduction to Sustainability Indicators on Waste and Recycling. Um, yeah, maybe some things are new to you, but I think, I hope uh, that this will be a good introduction to uh, looking into waste management and, and recycling. Um, yes, I've been already uh, kind of uh, being introduced, uh, but yes, I have a first degree in engineering and then uh, I've done master's degree and PhD uh, in the department of geography. Um, yes, I was uh, a research fellow at uh, the National University of Malaysia, University of Um And now I'm a professor at Taikyo University in Japan, uh, which is located about 40 kilometers west of central Tokyo. Um, yeah, and uh, also I've been doing research on waste management. Um, today I'll mention my research on material flow of paper recycling. Uh, I've done a lot of work on waste statistics and also uh, composition analysis. Um, sometimes you call it waste characterization. Um, yeah, different ways of naming things, but uh, basically looking into what uh, people's uh, waste uh, bins or uh, what is collected as uh, waste. Um, yeah, and uh, tomorrow I will be talking about uh, food waste. Um, yeah, so basically uh, when people ask me uh, what uh, I research, I say my research is rubbish. <laughs> Right. Um, so today in tomorrow's lecture, today I'll be talking about uh, yeah three uh, three R. Uh, I think uh, you have uh, heard a lot of times about uh, tiga R. Um, it's been like a buzzword these days. Um, and also the waste strategy in Japan and uh, indicators. So in order to uh, improve waste management, you need uh, indicators and set targets and try to uh, achieve the targets. So indicators are important. Um, and tomorrow I'll be talking about the uh, classification and quantification of food waste from households. Um, yeah, and uh, we'll have some uh, interactive uh, parts as well. And uh, also, please free, feel free to ask questions uh, during and after the presentation. Uh, you can raise hands if uh, anything is unclear. Uh, we have, I think, uh, enough time to uh, deal with all the questions. So, uh, three hours. Um, I think you have uh, heard about uh, three hours. Um, basically, uh, when you have something you don't need anymore, uh, what to do. Um, so it comes in this order. Uh, the higher up the hierarchy, the better op environmental option. Um, so you want to uh, reduce waste as much as possible. So, you know, if you don't come up with the waste, then uh, it's the best uh, thing. Uh, if uh, you I'd say uh, can't uh, reduce, uh, then uh, you think about uh, reusing it. So maybe I don't have a use for it, but somebody else might you have a use, then uh, give it or sell it to somebody else who could make use of the product as itself. Um, something like uh, secondhand clothes. Um, yeah, you just need to wash it for the next person to use or like secondhand books you have read it you don't uh, don't need it anymore and somebody else wants to read it then you can sell it or you can pass it on to somebody else uh, you don't need to put in any energy or uh, environmental burden uh, to give one item to another person 
Um, but if uh, nobody else wants it, uh, if um, the clothes is uh, torn or worn and uh, it's not no longer used, then you can recycle it uh, as materials. Um, then uh, for recycling, you need to collect a uh, large amount of things and then uh, usually you cut them down into pieces, uh, wash them, melt them, and then process into new materials. So in that process, you need the uh, energy input, uh, transport, and so on. So it is uh, less uh, desirable compared to reuse, but still making use of the material. So it's not as bad as uh, burning it or burning it into the landfill. Uh, but yes, if you can't recycle, then uh, you want to make use of it as energy. Um, so you can, um, if you incinerate uh, burn uh, waste, then the heat comes out and make use of that heat. Uh, or uh, with uh, things like food waste, uh, you can uh, ferment uh, with uh, in an anaerobic uh, condition, then you can get methane gas out of it and methane will burn and uh, you can generate electricity or uh, get hot water uh, recovered that way. Um, so it's not making use as a material, but uh, still you can use, uh, recover the energy out of things. So it's, uh, that comes forth, yeah. and. Uh, Finally, there are residues uh, which you can't make use of um, that needs to be safely uh, disposed uh, in landfills, probably. So um, when you come up with something you don't want, then uh, this uh, waste hierarchy applies. So you can show it in different uh, uh, diagrams. Uh, this is... Uh, talking about like uh, if you have a plastic bottle, uh, if you can study uh, harmful way of doing things. Um, oh, that yeah, should be fine, internet connection. Uh, anyway, um, but uh, if you want to recycle it, then you need to melt it and then uh, uh, mold it into new products so uh, there's extra energy input and co2 uh, emissions involved uh, you can chemically recycle as well uh, then that will involve even more uh, process and if you burn it as fuel you can get the energy but uh, you will get also uh, quite a lot of uh, co2 emissions as well so um, in this way you can see that smaller the loop is, the better it is uh, for the environment. Uh, this is an example of a uh, paper. Um, so if you use the paper and throw it away into a landfill, the whole circle uh, is the environmental burden. Uh, you can see that there's quite a lot of uh, uh, CO2 um, burden uh, from landfill because if you throw paper into the landfill, it will decompose. And uh, oftentimes in Southeast Asia, the landfills are in anaerobic condition, so it uh, generates methane. And methane is a uh, greenhouse gas that's uh, 20 times uh, more potent than CO2. Uh, so the burden from there is quite large. Um, if you incinerate it, uh, you can avoid uh, the methane uh, emission. Uh, you come up with uh, CO2. So probably the greenhouse, uh, how do you say, uh, burden will be um, reduced. Uh, so uh, all this landfill uh, burden would, could be uh, avoided. Uh, but uh, like if you recycle, uh, you can see fiber recycling, then it will be just about one uh, sixth of uh, the total emission. And um, this uh, 
a colleague of mine while I was doing my PhD in Cambridge um, was uh, advocating an um printer. Uh, you know, you have a photocopier which copies things, but uh, what he suggests is you can slot paper in and it will remove uh, the ink and uh, reuse paper again. Then you don't need to make paper and you just uh, have that tiny bit of uh, printing uh, uh, burden to the environment. So uh, that's also uh, an example. Um, reuse is better than recycling and uh, um, recycling is better than uh, incineration and, and uh, landfill is most burdening. So this is the uh, um, theory about uh, three hours. Um, also, I could mention that uh, uh, this is uh, showing the proportion of uh, CO2 emission in the case of Japan. Uh, we have about one ton of CO2 emission per person per year. Um, um, direct emission from waste management, uh, you can see on the top, is just 2.9%. Um, in the case of Japan, uh, we incinerate most of the burnable waste, so there's not much missing uh, output. And so uh, the direct emission from waste uh, is uh, rather small. Uh, but um, by doing uh, 3R, uh, what we are doing is to reduce the CO2 emission from production making use of uh, uh, resources. So you don't need to process it from the uh, scratch. Um, so that will reduce uh, CO2 emission from production. And also if you could reuse, then you're not producing new things. So the entire production part of the uh, CO2 emission could be reduced. And also if you uh, reduce, uh, that means you don't use something to start with. So like, you know, uh, if you have a plastic bottle, instead uh, I see some people are bring their own bottles and then that could be used again and again. Uh, so that could el eliminate the use of uh, plastic bottles. Then you'll be eliminating the CO2 emission from production, transport. Well, that will be like half of the emission. So altogether, if you do 3R, uh, you are not reducing only the emission from waste, but also from production and transport. And uh, waste management can contribute as far as uh, reducing one third of the total emission of uh, the society. So we are talking about, yeah, this is uh, in writing, it will be like this, uh, direct emission from waste is relatively small. However, waste reduction eliminates the needs of extra production. So that will eliminate production and transport. Um, so uh, three hours can uh, reduce much more greenhouse gas emission than direct emission from waste treatment. And waste management is uh, not uh, end of pipe responses, but it's to optimize the material flow in the society. Um, so that was the theory about the uh, CRs. And uh, now I would like to talk about the uh, stages of development uh, of the economy and uh, CR. So um, in a country like uh, Japan, uh, we have the infrastructure for waste management, uh, sanitary landfill, incineration. So waste is uh, being treated uh, in a reasonable way. Um, and, but uh, so then uh, you want to look at uh, resources. Um, the cost of labor is quite expensive, uh, well, anywhere in the world these days, uh, but uh, reuse and recycling requires a bit more human labor compared to just uh, burning or dumping uh, waste. Um, so 
when uh, labor becomes expensive, then uh, it will be economic um, difficult for uh, recycling. Yeah, but if you think about the cost of waste management, then that will usually pay for the labor costs. Uh, but the, so uh, in industrialized countries, uh, there's a big emphasis on three R's. Uh, yes. Uh, the infrastructure for waste treatment is already there. Uh, but in less developed uh, countries, um, there's uh, very poor infrastructure for waste. So there's no sanitary landfill or... Ah, this is useful. Thank you. So... Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, where are my yeah, yes. Um yeah, for infrastructure. Uh so um is important, but if you don't have a proper infrastructure for treating waste, then that will be uh it will be needed to provide for that first. So if you as a administrator, you it's a reverse of the three R's. You need to provide for landfill, and then you need to think about the intermediate. Uh, I say, uh, ordinary citizen. Uh, then you think about reduce first, and then reuse, recycle. Yeah. So depending on uh, which position you take, uh, so if you're in a the government, maybe you might want to uh, emphasize uh, infrastructure first, um, especially in less developed countries where there's no infrastructure. And uh, regarding uh, recycling, uh, recycling uh, in the may most case runs naturally uh, without intervention. So you can let things as it and uh, still recycling takes place. Uh, maybe Indonesia is uh, getting towards a kind of emerging transition stage uh, where if you don't do anything, then the waste gets uh, landfilled and uh, nobody picks up the uh, resources. So we will really start needing to uh, arrange things so that uh, things will be reused and recycled. Um, so in order to promote uh, reuse and recycling, uh, as I said, indicators will be useful. Um, so what are the concerns? Uh, energy, material flow, and waste, uh, you know, is an uh, important factor for material flow. Um, and you want indicators, set target, and try to achieve the target. So that's an effective way of uh, progressing. Um, so if you don't have the indicator, it's very difficult to measure how much progress you are making. And uh, it's very difficult to set goals, targets. So indicators are important. Um, when it comes to setting indicators, uh, recycling, indicators for recycling is the easiest. Uh, but actually, reduce and reuse uh, is more should be more prior prioritized uh, according to the waste hierarchy. So that's the uh, irony there uh, in the time being. Um, for people in the government, it's easier to say I have recycled so and so, and I have met the target. Uh, but with reuse and reduce, uh, it's quite difficult to. Uh, measure, uh, have a good indicator, and that's partly why uh, recycling takes place more than reuse and reduce, uh, but uh, you need to uh, put more effort on this side as well. Um, so it's, if you look at the recycle only, then uh, people might be using a lot, lots of lots of bottles, and if you say, you know, this is recycled, so it's okay to use, but still, uh, even if you recycle 90% of all the bottles, but uh, then 10% will go somewhere, 
And uh, even in Japan, uh, the recycling rate is quite high, but if you go to the rivers uh, or beaches, you can find lots and lots of bottles, uh, not only in Indonesia, but Japanese beaches as well, because you can't get 100% recycled. Somebody will just throw somewhere and that will eventually flow into the river and end up in the ocean. Um, so plastic bottles are a good thing as long as they are recycled, not DD. You want to uh, reduce it. Uh, and also there are cases like uh, uh, in the UK, uh, they introduce a separate collection of uh, compostable waste. And then the waste amount of waste increased because before, uh, this is a rather rural area. So people did uh, compost in their backyard. But if you do a uh, separate collection and they will put it out for waste collection, and that was the irony as well. Uh, but in, on paper, it looks good because uh, you have a higher recycling rate. Um, so you have to be a bit careful about indicators, but uh, indicators are useful. Uh, uh, high moon. Uh, see here uh, is the author of uh, this cartoon uh, he's a professor of uh, waste management i learned from my sensei <laughs> my guru uh, so he's a academic as well as a cartoon artist and uh, you can see that uh, recycling might help but uh, you want to the taps So indicators for recycling, uh, how you can measure recycling. Um, I think some of the uh, numbers are familiar. So first you have the recovery rate. So you, if you have uh, one ton of waste and you manage to get 300 kilos out of it and it into resource, you have a recycling rate of 30%. So that's the idea of the recovery rate. Um, but that's not only the uh, indicator for recycling. You have the utilization rate. That means, um, yeah, uh, say like toilet paper. You have a paper, toilet paper that uh, is 100% recycled. What does it mean? It means that uh, the ingredient for making that paper is made comes from waste paper so um, and the first one recovery rate is uh how to say back end uh, you get some amount of waste and how much gets recycled but the reutilization rate is looking at the production how much secondary materials recycled material you use for producing certain products. So both are important. And also as a third uh, indicator, uh, number of, how many times you have used that uh, resource. So you have a recycled product, uh, contains recycled uh, material, but uh, actually how many times has it been used? Uh, like recycled paper, maybe the original paper was just used once and then you're using it twice. But if you are going round and round and round, you might have paper that contains fiber that's been used four, five, six times. So uh, all these three uh, indicators uh, is interesting to look at. So um, if you look at the society as a whole, um, it looks like this. So in Japan, uh, the Ministry of Environment uh, looks at uh, gathering information on the total uh, flow of materials in Japan. Um, so the recovery rate is uh, looking at the, yeah, it's, sorry for the small letters here, but this is the amount of waste being generated. Uh, well, maybe I'll start from the beginning uh, where things are put into the society, you have resources, uh, natural resources coming in, uh, which is partly imported and some parts are domestic. Uh, in Japan, we import a lot of uh, 
natural resources and you have uh, recovered materials. Uh, so all these three sources uh, come in uh, to the society. So the you have the total material input here, and then some would be exported as goods, some, uh, some will be turned into buildings or cars and uh, added to the stock of materials in the society. Uh, some things uh, are used as fuel, so it just uh, turns into energy and the rest will be converted to CO2 and released to the air. Uh, things like food consumption and so on, and you have the waste. And uh, waste uh, uh, would be uh, like burned or disposed into landfills. And in the case of Japan, we uh, burn a lot of waste. So the final disposal amount is quite small and you have the recycled amount. So recycling rate, uh, uh, recovery rate is uh, looking as uh, a recycled amount uh, is the uh, uh, numerator and uh, waste generation is the denominator. So this uh, is the recycling amount uh, divided by the waste generation. Uh, if you look at the utilization rate, uh, what percentage of the total material input is recycled? So you look, uh, this is comes as the uh, uh, denominator and the secondary material uh, would be the nominator. So you, it's a matter of uh, whether you are looking at this side or you're looking at this side. Uh, both are important, uh, but if you think about, how do you say, creating, uh, well, uh, in the Japanese uh, context, we call it uh, uh, sound material cycle uh, society. Um, then it is important to use uh, recycled materials uh, in Japanese industries. So they, as a government policy, uh, you are looking, we are looking more into the utilization rate. Uh, we need to use more uh, recovered materials. Um, then there will be a demand for recovered uh, materials, then naturally it will uh, increase uh, utilization, uh, no, recovery rate, that's the idea. Uh, if you look at the pen, uh, each uh, material, uh, this is a figure about uh, paper recycling. Uh, in Japan, the recovery rate, well, this is, a bit in the past, uh, now it, the amount is like quite stable, so it's not interesting to see. But in the early 2000s, uh, the recovery rate increased while the utilization rate was, uh, well, you, uh, not increasing as rapidly as the recovery. Uh, what was happening was that uh, Japan was exporting waste paper, and uh, so the difference is the amount of export. You recover this amount of uh, waste paper, but use only this bit, and the difference is being exported, uh, mostly to China at that time. Um, so you can see that uh, in the paper recovery rate, you use a certain amount of paper and how much paper you recover as a uh, waste paper and uh, make use of. Uh, when comes the utilization rate is how much waste paper you use for production of paper. So I hope uh, you understand what the difference between recovery rate and utilization rate is. Uh, so yes, so Japan uses the utilization, emphasizes the utilization rates uh, in this uh, fundamental plan for establishing a sound material cycle society. Um, yeah, so basically uh, by optimizing the flow of material in society, uh, we want to achieve a society uh, in which environmental burden and natural resource use is minimized. Yeah, it's important to minimize environmental burden uh, and uh, you do it through uh, reusing, recycling uh, products and materials.
And as the target indicators, there are three indicators uh, in the Japanese uh, plan. Uh, resource productivity, recycling utilization rate, and amount of final disposal. So resource productivity is also another interesting uh, indicator. Um, as stated here, um, well, yeah, just, uh, basically, uh, economic-wise, uh, country wants to increase the GDP, uh, the gross uh, domestic product. Uh, this is an indicator uh, how much economy is prospering. So people want more increased GDP. But uh, you want to achieve an increased GDP with uh, as little material input as possible. So you want to make a lot of money with a limited amount of resource. Uh, resource productivity is a measure uh, dividing uh, the GDP with the total material input. So, so Japan achieved uh, that GDP with uh, total material input of, uh, this is, uh, in, is it million tons? Um, yeah, I can't see the unit, <laughs> but uh, this amount of total material input. So you want to uh, increase uh, GDP while not increasing the total material input. And uh, how much GDP you can produce uh, with one ton of resource? That's the resource productivity. So in 2000, uh, in Japan, uh, we managed to produce uh, about 23, 24,000 yen of uh, GDP uh, using one ton of materials. Uh, we try to add more value to the materials and the GDP we get from one ton of uh, resource has been increasing a bit. Um, yeah, uh, the latest figure we are, we are using for the current uh, target is uh, 2015, uh, reaching almost 40,000 yen per ton. And the current target is to achieve 50,000 yen per ton uh, by 2025, and I think uh, we are uh, more or less on schedule. Uh, now we are revising this target for 2030, and uh, yeah, we are saying like uh, 53, 54, 55 uh, uh, thousand uh, yen per ton. So this way, uh, we are trying to achieve uh, more money with less resources. Uh, that will mean uh, prospering economy with less environmental burden. And so resource productivity uh, uh, is probably a useful indicator. And this one is a utilization rate. Uh, we are trying to achieve 18% uh, by 2025. And uh, it's a bit of a struggle. It's not increasing since uh, 2009 or so. And uh, we're not sure if we can uh, achieve it, but uh, trying to achieve this target. Um, yeah, in 2000, it was just 10%. So looking from that, there have been some improvement. Um, on the other hand, uh, Japan has drastically managed to uh, decrease the amount of uh, waste uh, being finally uh, sent to landfills. So in 2000, uh, we had 60 million tons of uh, waste going to the landfill, but you can see that uh, it's uh, almost like uh, one fourth quarter uh, and uh, 
Yeah, uh, there's always residues that couldn't be recycled or reused. So um, the target is not that ambitious, but uh, you can see that uh, Japan has reduced uh, drastically the amount of the waste being sent to landfills. Yeah, so that's about the, uh, I say, macro uh, targets and policies of uh, Japanese waste management. Uh, maybe I'll have a small break here if uh, you've uh, got any questions so far, uh, what I've talked. Is that right? Good morning. Uh, this is a good presentation. So I have some questions uh, regarding waste management, but my question will focus on the developing country. Like my country, I came from a developing country with less economy. So according to the three R's, that is reuse, reduce and recycle, most of our uh, waste management system or how we reduce waste is either that we reduce through burning or recycle because we lack technology. We don't have good technology. So what are the possible solutions or suggestions for a developing nation like my country, which I came from Africa, that has less technology so in these three classes of waste, which is the best method to adopt or to use? Are we going to use reduce, recycle, or like um, which is more common, which is dispose? The waste could be disposed along the drainage system, which could cause flooding and other environmental problems. Yeah, that's my first question. Then secondly, uh, I need more explanation on this indicators of recycling. You have made mention of recovery rate and utilization rate. I was a little bit confused because uh, what I had from you, the recovery rate is the amount of waste recovered. I think what this is what I had, but the utilization is the combination of both secondary material and the primary materials in order to produce uh material that is to produce uh materials so uh please i want more explanation on that recycling rates recovery and utilization rates thank you very much okay uh thanks for your question uh, um so the first question um uh options uh you mentioned the lack of uh, technology but uh, well reduce is very easy in a way uh, regarding technology because it's just avoiding using uh, things or not throwing away, yeah? Um, so instead of uh, using plastic bottles, you can have a durable bottle that you can use many, many times, then you can, you'll be reducing plastic bottles. So that requires no new technology, basically. Reuse is also uh, not that technology intensive uh, because it's like uh, making use of uh, all the clothes. Uh, if you are uh, grown too big or uh, other reasons you want not using your clothes, then you can have somebody maybe want to use it. So that also requires no uh, advanced technology. Maybe for, I say, you need to find somebody that wants the item. So these days you have an app, uh, maybe here as well, I don't know. You can register what you want to sell or give, and then somebody will look at it and say, I want it, I want, you know, I'll buy it from you and so on. So then technology can be involved, but uh, not uh, anything really rocket science kind of thing. Um, recycling is a bit, more, I say, technology driven, I would say. Uh, but most of the recycling is not that, I just say, technologically challenging. Uh, if you want to recycle 
plastic bottles. You just crush them into pieces, wash and uh, apply heat, and this this will melt, and you can form it to any other product. So there's not too much new. Uh, well, in most recycling, you don't need a uh, advanced technology. Um, but yes, if you want to recycle something that is not so easy to recycle, then you have to involve uh, new technologies to make use of things. Um, but you can start from something that's easier to recycle, plastic recycling, paper recycling as well. You melt the paper into water and then you can uh, make paper out of that. So it's not so advanced technology. Yeah, so things like energy recovery is uh, quite uh, technically advanced because you don't want to pollute the air while uh, burning the waste, or if you want to cleverly uh, recover methane out of uh, food waste or something like that, you have to control the micro and uh, get them to work. So you have to I would say, have them in a good uh, condition uh, to decompose waste and turn it to methane. So as it goes down, it's more technologically challenging. So it's actually easier to do uh, things on higher on the hierarchy. OK, yeah. Um, then I'll talk about uh, the, 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 the recovery rate and utilization rate. So yes, as I said, um, like if you have 10 tons of waste, which contains something like metal and a bottle and paper and so on, you can extract uh, the paper, plastics, metals, and uh, if you could make use of like three tons out of uh, 10 then the recovery rate is 30%. Yeah. Uh, utilization rate is how much recovered material you use when you produce things. So, well, I guess this uh, plastic bottle is 100% new material, but uh, if you produce a, a bottle out of uh, recycled plastic, um, you might not have 100% recycled, but uh, maybe half of the uh, material is uh, recovered and half is new, then the utilization rate is 50%. So if it's either looking at the disposal stage or looking at the production stage. So production stage is utilization rate and the disposal stage is the uh, recovery rate. Does it make, yeah? Thank you. So then I'll go on to the case study of uh, paper recycling and uh, talk about the, how to get an estimate of a number of use. So if you have a paper which says recycled content 60%, then that means the re uh, utilization rate is 60% but you don't know about the recovery rate. Um, number of views, uh, if you can know that the, this paper contains uh, the fiber inside it has been used three times, then that's more clear indicator than just saying 60% utilization. Um, so how can we estimate the number of views? Um, I suppose most of you have like science background. Uh, you are okay with like uh, numbers and uh, uh, equations uh, and, and uh, a bit of a uh, matrix uh, calculation is involved in this uh, thing as well. So anyway, so if you think about uh, this kind of a closed loop, uh, you produce and use uh, 100 and uh, 50 is recovered and 50 is disposed. And then the recovered amount is uh, being used for producing new products. So in this case, it's a 50% utilization rate and 50% recovery rate. And in this kind of loop, 
uh, you can think uh, that in the beginning, everything is new, but 50% uh, is recovered, 50% is disposed, and then the 50% is used for new products. So in the second run, you have half which is used to twice and one half which is new. You can see from here. And then uh, this thing will be uh, reaching uh, disposal and half will be disposed and half will be recovered and put into new products. So in the third round, you have uh, half that is used once and then this one bit will be used second time and this bit will be used third time. Um, and the fourth round, uh, this bit will become used second time, this bit will be used third time, and the third time use will be used four times. So eventually you have half that is used once, and the one quarter that's being used twice, one eighth that being used three times, one sixteenth that being used four times, one thirty second that's five times, and one sixty fourth that's the sixth time, and one 128. Uh, so how does it work? Average, uh, uh, the proportion of, uh, well, oh, let's start from here. So proportion of more than N times used will be uh, the re recovery rate to the power of N. So if you, um, in this round, um, the proportion of more than two times used will be uh, r is 0 0.5, 50% to the power of two. So it's um, the proportion of the material used uh, more than twice will be just one fourth, three times, four times, five times, six times. So proportion of uh, material that's being used exactly n times uh, will be r to the power of n to n minus one um, minus r to the n. So if you want uh, the amount that's being used exactly twice, then you would like to calculate the amount that uh, at least being used to more than once minus uh, the material that's been used more than twice, yeah? Then you get this part here. So it's uh, r to the power of minus n minus one minus r to the power of n. And uh, average number of views is adding all this together, one times 50%, two times 25%, three times 12.5%, uh, four times 0 0.0625, and so on. Um, if you formulate it into a uh, formula, then it will be something like this. Uh, one minus the recovery rate to the power of minus one. What does this mean? Uh, if you have a recovery rate of, or the reutilization rate of 75%, um, that means um, the average number of views is four, yeah? Um, recovery rate of uh, 0 0.75 means that you lose 25% each time. Uh, by the time you uh, use it, uh, you have four rounds, uh, each time you lose 25%. So by the fourth time you lose uh, all the initial input. You can think it that way. And so the, average number of views is four. If you have a recovery rate, use re recovery and reutilization rate of uh, 0 0.9, 90%, then you'll be losing only 10% each cycle. Then you can use 10 times, yeah? So you can calculate the number of views, average number of views this way. Yeah, if it's just 50%, then you'll be using two times in average, yeah? 75% uh, will be four times in average, 90% 10 times, 
if you could uh, recover 99%, you'll be using the same 100 times because you just lose 1% each cycle. Uh, when it comes to paper, things are rather complicated because you have lots of different types of paper, um, and types of pa produced paper. You have like, uh, well, this is uh, Japanese statistics. So it's in all Japanese, but uh, you have newspaper, you have uh, printing paper, you have uh, uh, toilet paper, you have uh, cardboard, um, all sorts of different papers. And uh, when you recover paper, it's also separated into different paper. So you have uh, uh, non-printed white paper, colored paper, uh, brown paper, newspaper, magazines, and so on. Um, and you have a statistics like this, how much uh, different type of waste paper is used for different types of paper product. So by using that kind of statistics, um, you can see that how much waste paper is being used for the production of certain types of paper and uh, that certain type of paper, how much is being disposed and how much is being recycled into other paper. And if you stick together all these different type of paper, you get a flow like this. So these are white printing paper. Uh, some of it is recovered and uh, made into toilet paper, or it could be made into cardboard. The cardboard. Difficult to see. Uh, this is newspaper, newspaper, and then this is cardboard, and so on. Uh, so it's like the uh, has a staircase. Uh, printing white paper is the highest grade paper. It could be used for other things, and then it will be used for newspaper. It will be used for cardboard, and then finally, uh, it can't be used and uh, disposed. So uh, this is called uh, cascading recycle. If a certain thing is uh, recycled into a same product every time, uh, it's called a horizontal, yeah, horizontal uh, recycling. So uh, you, the, a bottle turns into a pull and then pour it, and then it turns into the bottle again, and so it goes round and round. Uh, but in the case of plastics, and uh, in the case of paper, it's usually like this. Uh, fine grade paper will be used for producing a low grade paper, and then it will be used for producing cardboards and so on. And uh, so in order to estimate the amount number of use for each type of waste, uh, paper, uh, you need a matrix that uh, which, uh, I say, uh, paper would be turned into which type of waste paper and also which type of waste paper uh, oh this is the uh, so which type of original paper will be turned into which waste paper and which waste paper will be turned into new paper then if you uh, uh, get the uh, inner product of these matrix uh, you get a matrix that will show which original paper will be turned into which new paper. And uh, by using uh, this kind of uh, flow matrix, uh, yeah, so, so you can see that the newspaper will be, uh, no. yeah, uh, the newspaper's waste paper contains 61% newspaper and nice. 39% other types of paper. You know, if uh, they try to collect, paper, but uh, all other papers will be mixed into newspaper. So it's something like this. So that's what this kind of trick shows. And uh, 
So you can do a similar calculation using matrix. Uh, so you have the recycling matrix and the average uh, number of views uh, matrix will be that C uh, would be, uh, how do you say, the unit um, matrix minus the recycling matrix uh, to the power of minus one. And the proportion of uh, exactly n time use uh, will be like, r to the power of n minus r to the power of n minus 1, which is basically the same as uh, like this simple uh, horizontal recycling. See the similarity here. Um, yeah, it's a bit complicated to demonstrate the mathematics behind this, but anyway, using uh, these kind of uh, calculation, you can get uh, like, uh, well, the data is a bit old, but the Japanese newspaper, uh, the paper, fiber contained in that paper is being used uh, in average 3.3 times. So you have uh, this amount of paper that's uh, new, and this is you being used uh, twice. This is being used three times, this four times, five times, six times. And in average, it's like 3.3. Uh, when it comes to like high grade uh, printing paper, quite uh, dominantly new paper with a certain amount of recycled paper like this, and the average number of use is one point five. Uh, wrapping paper is uh, average use is one point two. Uh, sanitary paper, meaning like toilet paper, uh, forty percent is about one time use. Uh, another. 40% is like used twice, and you have three times, four times, five times, six times. Um, so paper products tend to be, has a lower average number of views, but uh, these are cardboard. Uh, a new material is only this bit, and uh, you have twice used, three times used, four times used, five times used, six times used. And you can see that uh, more than 40% is being used more than six times. And as you use paper many times, uh, the quality of the paper fiber deteriorates and uh, you can't probably use more than 10 times. Uh, the, then the, like the cardboard will be too weak uh, to use. So um, probably like 6.4, is almost uh, using to the maximum. Uh, so if you want to uh, increase uh, the average number of views uh, in photo paper, then probably you need to put more effort into using uh, waste paper into in producing things like uh, newspaper and also the printing, uh, high-grade printing paper. Um, yeah, so you can, uh, compare how things are improving. Uh, back in 1993, things are like this. So you have much more first use paper and uh, you can see that uh, the red bit is not so much there, but uh, be as a result of improving the recycling system, um, we have achieved much more number of use. Uh, you can do an international comparison. This is UK. I think, yes. Um, and uh, it uh, shows slightly different aspect to Japan, uh, partly due to the fact that the UK uh, is nearer to Scandinavian countries where they produce a lot of new paper. Um, and so that kind of uh, geographical uh, practice matter as well. So UK, uh, this is the uh, relatively new data, this is the old one. So they have improved from here to here. So, well, uh, um, so by, if you have, uh, how to say, the statistics, you can calculate the average number of views. Uh, and as recovery rate uh, goes up, uh, the total flow becomes more closed. Uh, so, you'll be using the same materials again and again, and the average number of views will rise. Um, when it comes to paper, with the increase of uh, 
age and number of views, uh, the physical quality will be deteriorated. So it becomes more difficult. Um, so if the number of views is uh, relatively low, then high utilization rate for product is still possible. Um, so we want to look into improving this part. And uh, as uh, you use the material many times, uh, more stringent uh, quality control, uh, that means good sorting. Uh, you don't want impurities in the recycling as the number of views increases. In the initial stages, it's okay to have relatively dirty recyclables. But if you want to use more and more, then you need more sophisticated, more well-sorted uh, input. Um, so that was about uh, recycling. Now I want to think about reuse, uh, indicator for reuse. Uh, with recycling, it's relatively simple. You want to have increased recovery rate, increased utilization rate, increased number of use. But uh, in case of reuse, um, things are not that straightforward. Um, things like, uh, well, we don't reuse uh, plastic bottles that much, uh, but uh, glass bottles uh, are reused quite often uh, because with plastic bottles, it's very difficult to wash thoroughly. Uh, you know, if uh, you want uh, to make it really clean with hot water, then the bottle itself will melt. So you can't apply heat for plastic bottle. It's so rather difficult to completely, I say, clean the bottle for many times use. But with uh, glass bottles, you can apply very hot uh, water and uh, it will be sanitized and uh, you can use for packaging the new products. Uh, so uh, many years ago, um, soft drinks and beer uh, all come into glass bottles, um, and if you finish the content that will be collected, that will be washed and brought to the factory again and refilled. Um, so in that kind of uh, situation, a uh, number of views is good. This bottle is being used 10 times or something like that. Um, actually, in Japan, uh, we have a very good uh, reuse system for beer bottles. Um, we have a recovery rate of about 95%. That means each round you lose 5%. So the average number of use of beer bottles in Japan is almost 20 times. So beer bottles are used 20 times, which is quite good. Um, but for durable goods, uh, as a number of views might not necessarily be a good indicator. Uh, like clothes, um, if I wear it for 10 years, that is as good as 10 people using it one year each. Yeah, uh, I use it one year and then I pass it on to somebody else and then that person will be wearing it for one year and then the third person will be wearing it for one year and so on, or I use it 10 years all through. It's the same, isn't it? So in that sense, number of views might not be a good indicator. Yeah, uh, many users, short use and one use, long use is basically the same uh, consequence. So maybe the average use time might be a better indicator for reuse. I've been using this clothes being used for 10 years or um, that washing machine being used for 10 years or that car is being used 10 years. It, it, it doesn't matter how many users you have. You can drive your car for 10 years or you can sell it to somebody else and uh, that person will be using for another two years and then the third users will be using like three years and so on. It's the same. So what matters is how long the products are being used. 
So average use time might be better for durable products, uh, reuse uh, indicator for durable products. Uh, but it is rather difficult to get information on average use time. Uh, you can do a random sample uh, sampling and uh, get the uh, average age. Like uh, cars, you can do a random sampling and see when the car has been manufactured, and then you can get an average number. But uh, in order to get that, you need to do a lot of sampling, and uh, it's not as easy as uh, calculating the recycling rate, because with the recycling rate, the factories know how much they produce and how much ingredients they use. So it's uh, more accurate, but uh, with, uh, if you want to get the average use time of a product, it's not that easy. Another way of uh, estimating the average use time is uh, divide the amount of unused uh, by new production. So if we know that uh, there are 1,000 washing machines in the society, and each year uh, 100 new washing machines is being uh, produced and sold, then you can assume that the uh, washing machine is being used 10 years in average because each year 100 of them out of uh, 1,000 will be replaced. Yeah, And uh, in 10 years, everything will be replaced. That will mean an average use of 10 years. So this is one another way of uh, measuring it. Uh, also, you can uh, estimate uh, by uh, dividing the amount of use uh, by how much is being uh, uh, thrown away. Uh, you have uh, 2,000 refrigerators, and uh, each year one, uh, 100 refrigerators is being uh, thrown away. Then probably that will mean that uh, the refrigerators were used 20 years on average. Um, but this kind of uh, estimation, uh, if you try uh, to do some kind of a policy, say, uh, let's increase uh, reuse, uh, or like, uh, let's design washing machines so that it will uh, be more durable. So in the past, it will be broken in five years, but uh, we'll make it so that it will can run for 10 years. Uh, if you want to see the result of that, then you have to wait until that product broke down. So uh, if you design a product that should be durable for 10 years, you have to wait 10 years for the number to come out uh, if it actually really increased the average use time. Um, so that's also an issue. Uh, with, for the policy makers, they want immediate results. With recycling, you say, we will imp implement a new recycling center, and then you will immediately know how much new, uh, how much recycled uh, material we used for producing new products and so on. So the result is immediate, but uh, with uh, reuse policies, the results come out five or 10 years later, and uh, many people can't wait that long, that's the problem. But uh, we should be uh, patient and uh, wait for the results to come, I would say. Um, when it comes to indicators for reduction, reduce, which is the highest priority in uh, waste hierarchy, uh, it's, more, even more difficult, yeah. Uh, reduce before recycling or reuse, and recycling is not reduction, uh, as I have uh, explained earlier. So, um, how to measure reduce? This is difficult. Um, <coughs> as a society, like the city of Malang. 
maybe you can say, see, yeah, we produced 10,000 tons of waste. Next year, we produce 9,000 tons of waste. Then we might have, uh, we could have, could say that we reduced 1,000 tons of waste, but um, things might be a bit different uh, depending on the definition and category of waste. And also, maybe the waste is not being collected by the municipality, but uh, maybe going to somewhere else. Uh, so there's no proof that uh, even if you had uh, 10,000 ton and it's now 9,000, uh, you have reduced 1,000. The 1,000 may be going to somewhere else. So basically measuring what's not there is uh, quite difficult. And uh, so one way of uh, measuring reduced is uh, uh, looking at how much minimization behavior is taking place. Like uh, how many people are carrying their own bottle instead of using new bottles each time, or how many people are bringing their own a bag for shopping than rather so ah still still okay, okay. um um measuring such kind of uh, behavior uh is one way to, uh Um, so, uh, yes, uh, indicated for re reduce is quite difficult because if you're looking at the uh, oh, independently, okay, but uh, if you want to look at more comprehensively, uh, it's a bit difficult, so it's a challenge. So, uh, this is the final slide. Um, Basically, good indicators are essential for good policy. Uh, Japanese waste policy, we are making use of the utilization rate, the recovery rate, the material productivity, uh, and the amount being landfilled. Um, and uh, as I've said, uh, recycling rate, uh, re recovery rate, or utilization rate is not necessarily the best indicators. Number of use, how many times it's been used, maybe uh, quite easy to understand and uh, reflects the situation quite well. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, reuse, uh, we need to be patient with uh, results. And uh, for reduction, yeah, we need to think of a good, uh, better indicator. Uh, that's the challenge at the moment. So uh, um, I have talked about the uh, indicators for uh, waste and uh, trying to promote uh, the three R's. So reduction first and then reuse and recycle. So uh, this concludes the lecture for today. And any questions, comments uh, would be appreciated. Thank you. It's a, uh, not much related to indicators, uh, but I can talk about, uh, how do you say, education 
aspect of uh, waste management in Japan. Um, so I don't know from when, uh, but it's been going on for maybe 20, 30 years. Uh, in the national curriculum for primary school, um, it's been recommended uh, for fourth year uh, students, uh, pupils at the primary school uh, to visit uh, environmental facilities. So that will include like uh, water purification or sewage treatment and also waste management. So probably more than half of uh, Japanese primary school students would have visited one waste treatment facilities. It could be landfills, or it could be incinerators, it could be recycling facilities, but there is such recommendation in the national curriculum. So they know what happens to your waste when you put it into the bin. And that's quite important, I think, and uh, makes uh, these young uh, people aware and uh, also the municipalities uh, often do study tours uh, of their facilities and also uh, they will come to classrooms and uh, teach about how to separate waste and uh, why it's important to do so. Um, also, um, we have school lunches and the school lunches are not only for providing food to the pupil, but also to teach uh, proper nutritional uh, information and uh, as they uh, eating habits, uh, including not to waste food. So there's uh, quite a few aspects of uh, education uh, being uh, implemented in Japan. How about in your country? Is there anything about the waste in uh, schools? I think so. Uh, uh, we are looking for the difference. In my country, Indonesia, we don't know about the uh, curriculum, uh, improvement curriculum. Uh, maybe my professor, my doctor, maybe can uh, bisa masuk kurikulum kita pembelajaran yang menurut saya paling penting adalah dari dasar karena untuk berpikir sesuatu yang besar dimulai dari kebiasaan-kebiasaan yang sudah dia menurut saya thank you Yeah, um, so it's important to put the curriculum. So it's important to train the teachers so that they can talk about the waste. Uh, yeah, if they don't know about waste, then they can't teach the students about the waste. So. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, in your lectures, you have made mention of recycle is better than incineration. You've said Japan incinerate most of the vulnerable waste. Yeah, so I want to know which categories of waste are vulnerable that Japan incinerates. Then secondly, in your lectures again, you have made mention of 
recycled as an indicator. Yeah. You give some uh, utilization methods, recovery methods, disposal method also. So is it from Japan has now dropped incineration methods to go for or to replace a recycle. Then again, the number of use or implication of recycling. You said there are many implications of recycling. Yeah. yeah. So my question here is, you've mentioned incineration as the first method, but going by your lectures, you said it has been changed to recycle. Yeah. yeah. Then yeah. finally to reuse. So what are the factors that led to this uh, progress from incineration, recycling, and lastly, to reuse? Thank you. Thanks for the question. Uh, well, so at this um, as a current moment, uh, I'm not so proud that Japan is uh, incinerating quite a lot of uh, waste. Uh, yeah, for, for the municipalities, sometimes if you have an incinerator, it's easiest to just um one is that uh, eventually uh incinerators probably last only for 30 40 30 years and uh, that's actually quite uh, positive as well. So when uh, so in Japan is in the stage that we are replacing all new incinerators, then you think you know whether to uh, manage without that incinerator and uh, direct the waste to recycling or other processes. And uh, so that's been a, one factor of uh, promoting more. Uh, recycling uh, but yes it's always a challenge um, people especially um, how to say uh, in the administration uh, they want easy solution uh, and uh, these days incinerators uh, well Japanese incinerators are so expensive and then uh, they could burn almost everything so it's easiest to incinerate there, but uh, we should try uh, to pursue alternative methods like uh, recycle, reduce, uh, reuse, uh, and not rely on uh, incineration or landfill. Any other comments, uh, questions? Oh, that's the uh, uh, online question. Pak Suhadi. Pak Agus Suhadi, monggo kalau ada pertanyaan. Thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, the question was the habit farmer in Japan to introduce to meet bottle of uh, pesticide because in Indonesia, farmer no habit a good. What they introduce from? Uh, why are you talking about the containers of uh, pesticides? Yes, I think so. Maybe it. Well, I guess the only way of making use of uh, containers that uh, contain the toxic or hazardous stuff is to use it for containers of the same product. So pesticides, uh, bottles or containers could be used, uh, reused for uh, containing new pesticides. Uh, you can't use it for food or any other purpose. Uh, I think uh, always there's a suitable use for uh, most things. Is it okay? Does it answering your question? Yes, thank you, Prof. Okay, thank you. 
uh, I think like maybe like one from me, professor, because uh, it's re in relation with the, 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 the container for pesticides. Actually, uh, it is maybe not related, but still related. I have once saw a product from a uh, European Union. I forgot which country, but they are using a, a bottle which made from plant. So it looks like a plastic bottle, but it's uh, used like a, fi a plant fiber. Uh, so I guess maybe the, the key is actually in, in innovation, in uh, developing technologies for that. Uh, I, I think so. But uh, as you say that it may need a long time for developing such technology. Right. Well, uh, you've uh, opened a tricky aspect. So you can produce PT, maybe 70% out of plant-based material. You can't make 100% plant-based uh, bottles. But uh, that way, you can reduce the amount of uh, uh, oil, crude oil, being used for producing plastics. But basically, um, just like biodiesel and so on, uh, it is a, a same, this is... Uh, uh, if you make from a uh, plant source, yeah, it's also uh, polyethylene and telethate. So it's the same plastics. So it won't solve the problems like uh, marine uh, pollution with plastics, you know, whether it's made from plant or petrol. And uh, yeah, and there's also a confusion uh, some people might believe it's made from a plant-based material, then it will biodegrade. Yeah, uh, but that's not the case. Uh, it's not necessarily the case. You can make biodegradable plastics from a plant-based material, but you can also make uh, biodegradable plastics from uh, oil. Yeah. And also you can make non-biodegradable plastics from plants and uh, also non-biodegradable plastic from oil. So the ingredients, whether you use plants or not, and whether it biodegrades or not, is not related. So you, and, uh, but people often call everything bioplastics. Um, but there are so many different bioplastics and you have to be very careful. And I think we should separate saying plant-based and uh, biodegradable. It's totally different thing. Thank you, Watana Pisan. Uh, I will ask what... Uh... I ever heard about uh, not just TR. Nowadays, uh, some society or uh, NGOs use 5R. Uh, reuse, reuse, uh, reduce, reduce, okay. reuse, reduce, also replace and, and replanting. What about your opinion uh, in the hierarchy of sustainable uh, waste management? Uh, sec my sec yeah, uh, my second question is: uh, This is a uh, two dimension of uh, in the economic aspect. One, our producer, our producer use plastic many more. And so uh, externalities or so waste is more waste. In the other hand, we, uh, even we are researchers or lecturer or teacher or activists, we use a uh, uh, mix, uh, we think to reduce it, to reduce uh, the, the externalities of industries. And, but our community uh, still need Comfortable of that. The, this is the problem, the, the human problem, because of all, it 
convertible product. But in the other hand, we campaign about sustainability. Uh, it's not uh, it's not yet uh, easy to to cope with uh, community. Thank you. Uh, thanks for yeah. your comment and question. Uh, yeah, there are many R's. Yes, uh, I like things like repair um, and uh, well, refurbish or yeah. Uh, many, uh, people come with a lot of uh, R's. So basically, any R should be. <laughs> promoted i would say and it's a matter of how to count so things like uh, repair is uh could the uh, i say contribute to reduce and reuse um if you are, you want to use it yourself and continue to use you repair it and uh, then you don't need to throw it away so it will be reduced uh, if you want to, if, if you want to sell a secondhand product and uh, it needs repair, then you repair it, and then it could be reused. So repair contributes to reduce and reuse, and uh, other things like refuse or re whatever would uh, probably fall into one of the three, uh, maybe the top two, uh, reduce or reuse. Uh, it's just a matter of counting, I would say. Uh, but, but, um, uh, I say three is a, a minimal number of uh, options, and you can have uh, reduce uh, separated into two parts, and then that will be like four hours and five hours and so on. Uh, externalities? Yes. Um, Another, I say, principle in Japanese waste management they talk about is uh, external producer responsibility, uh, which is a mouthful word. Uh, Europe and uh, countries like Canada uh, have been implementing this quite a lot. Uh, it should be responsible to some extent uh, when the pro product itself becomes waste. So if uh, the municipality is always in charge of waste, then the producer would not think about what happens when it becomes waste. So they produce things that will be difficult to treat or that will be harmful when it's thrown away into the environment. But if they are told to be responsible about what happens when the product becomes waste, uh, then they will think uh, to produce a product that will be easier to recycle or easier to treat as waste. And uh, there are several ways of uh, enforcing uh, this uh, extended uh, pro producer uh, responsibility. Uh, one is to designate that the producer must collect what uh, they have produced. So they are doing that for things like batteries. Uh, and in some countries, they've implemented that for tires for cars. Um, other rather, how do you say, hazardous items like uh, paint and uh, chemicals as well, um, the producers are responsible for collecting all the, uh, I say, waste from that product. Uh, that way, um, they will try to design products that will be less harmful to the environment and easier to recycle. And uh, the, probably they can then balance uh, the I say comfort uh, of convenience of the product and the environmental impact. Um, that's one way of, uh, I say, advancing forward. And they are doing it in Europe and uh, Canada and Japan is trying to follow it, but the producers themselves are 
rather reluctant to uh, assume the their new responsibility. So, us as a citizen uh, needs to put pressure on the producer that they should uh, be responsible when their products become waste. Yang bergabung lewat Zoom, Bapak Ibu, mungkin ada pertanyaan. No, really? Ah, sure. Uh, actually, I have a question. I'm not really sure how parent like to the electric car itself have as a trophy of electricity itself part of emission thank you Okay, uh, electric cars, yes, I have been thinking about that a bit. Um, so electric cars uh, makes sense if the original electricity is green. Um, so in Europe, they have made a huge effort of increasing wind power and solar and hydro. So the carbon intensity of uh, electricity in Europe is quite low. And also, they sometimes have surplus electricity if the sun is shining so well or you have a good wind. Then you can use the surplus energy to charge the batteries of the cars. But uh, I guess Indonesia, Japan, the electricity is quite carbon intensive. Even in Japan, we burn coal to make electricity and we generate a lot of CO2 for that. And if we are using that power to charge batteries for electric cars, it's just, how to say, shifting the emission from each car to the power plants and uh, do nothing better for the environment. So, there is potential for electric cars. Um, and also in big cities like, uh, well, Malang is also big enough, uh, you have a problem of uh, air pollution. And uh, in general, electric power plants are equipped with uh, better air pollution abatement facilities than individual cars and motorbikes. So if you were in want to improve the air quality, electric cars might make sense. But uh, when it comes to like CO2 emissions uh, in Japan or Indonesia, it, it, it's not that effective at this moment. Uh, so we have to improve the electricity provision first, I would say. Okay, thank you, Sensei. I think uh, also like, uh... I think it's a similar case with Indonesia that uh, we obtain our electricity also from coal. And uh, I think Indonesia is like one of the biggest coal production countries in the world, I guess. Um, so, yeah, uh, we still have a lot of, uh, like a very long way to go. <clears throat> but maybe um, if if I may ask a question, say like uh, maybe returning to the to your data, uh, because I, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, you 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 uh, show the data in Japan in 2014 or something like that, and then you compare that with the data data from 1993, uh, and there is quite a lot of difference. So I'm just wondering, what makes Japan shift the policy? Is there anything major happen or? It, Usually, people will change something when there's something happen. And uh, what makes it different in Japan? 
Yeah. Um, it's how to say difficult to tumble out which factors contributed the most. But uh, basically, one is that the uh, waste disposal is becoming more and more expensive. And the other one is uh, ingredients, uh, materials. It's becoming more and more expensive. So if you can reduce waste and uh, use that as an alternative material, financially, it makes quite good sense. And also this uh, pressure of reducing CO2 emission and so on. So uh, many factors contributed uh, in uh, yeah, bringing this to here. Okay, so yeah, it's a mixture of policies and uh, financial economic situations. Yeah. OK, uh, may I ask one question? I uh, if I may, I want to ask your opinion about Indonesia because um, you're you're citing like one of the factor that probably uh, encourage Japan to reduce is because of the lack of the material, and Indonesia is a country which is rich in materials. So we're kind of like uh, we are still in the in the mind that okay everything is okay. So uh, what do you think about that? <laughs> Uh, uh, that's tricky, uh, but yeah, in order to extract uh, materials from ground or uh, grow things, there is a environmental burden. And uh, also, uh, Indonesia is uh, rich in natural resources, but also rich in biodiversity. So if you want to protect the biodiversity, then uh, you can't dig everywhere and uh, destroy the habitat of uh, biodiversity. And uh, so if there's a way to value the biodiversity more, then probably we could uh, achieve a better balance. Right, thank you. One last chance for a question. Thank you. I will uh, ask about the uh, electronic waste. What about electronic waste? How to uh, manage the electronic waste like uh, our laptop, handphone, or nothing else? Yeah, um, e-waste. Uh, it... In order to make good use of uh... I'd say broken uh, electronic uh, appliances. Um, it contains valuable metals to some extent, uh, but you need to dismantle and uh, pick out the right parts for right purpose. And uh, probably, I don't know what's happening in, uh, exactly at the moment, uh, but uh, it is costly uh, to dismantle uh, these uh, equipments and uh, I say um, extract the right parts uh, for recycling. Um, and uh, because labor is cheaper in countries like uh, Indonesia, maybe some companies would uh, import uh, these uh, e-waste from somewhere and uh, try to make uh, money. But uh, I think as long as the extraction process is uh, made uh, so that uh, it won't be burdening for the environment, then uh, it should be promoted and it should work. So. Ideally, it's like you know, uh, developing developed country industrialized companies can send their broken uh, equipments to third world countries, uh, have it dismantled, and the extraction process can be original country, uh, which the extraction process. Uh, 
creates the most uh, environmental impact. Uh, you have to melt the metal and uh, distribute distill uh, it into new uh, materials. So, uh, basically, recycling is better than disposal. So what we need is a stringent uh, environmental control and a good system that enables the flow. Uh, that's what I think. And also, um, there's quite a lot of uh, equipment that could be easily repaired. So repairing, uh, how to say, skills uh, should be promoted more so that uh, things don't become waste. Uh, maybe also design of the product as well. Um, uh, currently, uh, I think the, some of the companies just want to sell more. So they, uh, how to say, it's a designed obsolescence, people say. So it's just, advertising that the new product is good and, and uh, people will want to buy new products and just throw away the old. But uh, we should design products so that it could be used longer, then it will reduce the amount of uh, e-waste being produced. So there are a few things that uh, could be done. Okay. Oh, Thank you. Uh, uh, I want to ask a question about the. Uh, I continue to my friends Abdul Qadir about in the developed country. Uh, we have a main problem about the uh, policy, sporting, and also habit, and also maybe a. Uh, facilities and services about the waste management. So uh, I we need uh, your opinion about which one the priority if we have a problem, if a policy, the first or facility services, or we improve the culture of waste management, which one the priority? It's uh, difficult to put priorities uh, in that sense, uh, but I guess, how to say, in order for policies to take place, it needs support from the general public, yeah? So, uh, as, uh, how to say, one ordinary citizen, probably uh, we need to act to increase awareness of the people around you and pr pressure on the government to implement policies. So yeah, that's how things work. Top approach is, uh, I say, stronger than top down saying government wants to do this, you do that, but people will want to cheat, cheat and not, uh, I say, follow. So uh, grassroots uh, awareness is also it's important so yeah that's my impression but uh you know you know it's a how you call it uh chicken and egg problem so um you have to try to improve in all kind of uh stages i would say Okay, I think that's probably all, Sensei. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, <laughs> if I if I uh, probably we, we already have like uh, all the necessary questions asked by our friends here. Uh, thank you very much. So, uh, if I may uh, summarize the, the lecture for today, I, I think it's very. Uh, uh, I've I've never actually think about the three R's. This. In, in this depth <laughs> yeah, before. So uh, today we, we got a lot of insight from Watanabe Sensei, which is uh, very uh, inspiring, I think. Um, and uh, if I can summarize, it's just like, I think it's like just two main points that uh, actually for uh, developing countries like Indonesia or like uh, another country in Africa, perhaps, that reducing and re uh, reducing Reusing and reducing is uh, 
more uh, preferable than recycling. So we have to make more effort in reducing and also reusing that what we have instead of like, you know, buying new one, something like that uh, for recycling. And also like, uh, actually I like uh, one of the points that good indicators can make good policy. And then, uh, but sometimes we, we still think that the policy is only uh, this responsibility of the people in the government or people who have you know power, so to say. But uh, we as a population, as the citizen, especially citizen of Indonesia also have the power to like influence uh, each other, uh, something like that, you know, make uh, educate the children, for example, or educate like the people around us um, in our capacity to make a good policy and then, you know, just like influence with a good, good indicator or something like that. So Sensei, do you have any closing remarks? Um, well, uh, I just hope that uh, this, uh, you have realized that there are lots of aspects of, uh, how to say, uh, research into waste uh, management and recycling. And uh, so, yes, if uh, this has uh, triggered your interest, I would be very happy. And yes, I'm very grateful to your attention. Uh, thanks. So before Mbak Jian close the, the uh, I would like to remind the uh, R1 PDL besok lagi ya. <laughs> Kemudian teman-teman dari PSLP terserah, uh, apakah misalnya kalau besok ditabrakan dengan kelas lain juga tidak apa-apa, jadi uh, see you next week. Uh, but it's uh, mandatory for PDL students for tomorrow session. Okay, 9.30 tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Buresti. Uh, all uh, we're closing our session lecture for today. And I'm Jen, would like to say thank you for your attendance. And I apologize if there is any inconvenient uh, during the session. See you tomorrow. Don't forget to come for PDL students. Because tomorrow topic is uh, about food waste. Uh, Actually, I also told the food waste, we can uh, we can do uh, food waste management in our household. So maybe that's the minimum we can do for reduce of uh, waste management in our household. So make sure you come tomorrow at the... Oh, it's 9.30. Uh, see you tomorrow. Again, uh, welcome.